because cancer is more likely to be cured if it's less advanced when treatment's begun, this is why it's critical that cancer be discovered early on. Cancer is the number two killer of people worldwide. It's a threat to you, it's a threat to me, and it should be taken seriously. Hey, Wellness Warrior, I'm Dr. Zorowski, and the top 10 warning signs of cancer are signs and symptoms that we have to watch out for. Let's dive in and first talk about a fever. And this is one of the first warning signs. And the thing is, is that certain characteristics of reoccurring fevers can foretell a possible cancer connection. You should pay particular attention if the fever happens mostly at night, if you have no other signs of infection. So you don't have a virus, you don't have a bacterial infection, but yet you have a fever, this is something you wanna watch out for or if you're experiencing night sweats. And before we move on any further, I do want to mention some of the warning signs of cancer are pretty general. They're vague changes that don't necessarily help a doctor pinpoint any particular cancer, but their presence can help direct doctors to do a physical, an examination, proper blood work, and whatever is necessary to either exclude or confirm a diagnosis of cancer. Let's jump back into the warning signs. And this one here is enlarged lymph nodes. Now, Mostly in the enlarged lymph nodes will happen in the neck, okay? And swollen lymph nodes can also be a sign of a very particular type of blood cancer called lymphoma. So if you start to notice that you have lumps around your neck and it doesn't quite make sense why you're having these issues, once again, you're not sick from a virus, you don't have a bacterial infection, you're not sick in any way, but yet you have enlarged lymph nodes, you wanna get these checked. And I, I find it all the time on the patients that I'm working on. It's like, uh, enlarged lymph nodes, let's get these checked. Now, as we're talking about cancer, we often hear cancer described in pretty much very vague terms. And nobody really knows what cancer is, right? We know it's a disease. We know it's awful. We know that it's killed so many loved ones in our lives. But what is cancer? Cancer is characterized by the development of abnormal cells that divide uncontrollably and have the ability to infiltrate and destroy normal body tissues. And this is why it's so dangerous. Cancer often has the ability to spread throughout your body. And cancer is the second leading cause of death in the world. Cancer is estimated to take many years to develop, and I think this is a very important point. Cancer just doesn't happen overnight. Many people think, well, you're, you're healthy one day, and then the next day you get checked and you have cancer. No, it's estimated by many experts that it can take 10, 15, even 20 years to develop cancer in your body. And so one of the ways this would develop is it first starts with a chronic inflammatory issue, for instance. And if you're not aware of whether or not you have inflammation in the body, this is something you should get checked. In fact, you could even use a simple at-home inflammation test that you will be able to determine if you're having cellular breakdown, which is linked to inflammation. I'll put a link in the description below so you can learn more about that, but it's very inexpensive, very easy to do. Now, next on our list is if you are having persistent pain. Persistent pain is a very common sign of potential cancer. Pain that keeps you up all night, pain that is chronic in nature, and no matter what you seem to do, it doesn't go away. Let's say you change the position that you're in, you roll over in bed, and that pain just never goes away. Now, we can look to bone cancers, they cause problems like this, um, tumors, even brain tumors that cause chronic headaches. We just have to be aware if there's chronic pain that doesn't make sense in our body, let's go ahead, get this thing checked, because it could be a sign of cancer. Now, the next common warning sign is unexplained weight loss. Now, without trying, almost half the people who have cancer lose weight, okay? So if you lose weight and it doesn't make sense, you're not dieting, you're not calorie cutting, you're not doing anything to lose weight and you just keep losing weight, this is an alarm. It's often one of the signs that gets noticed first. Cancer steals food from healthy cells and deprives them of nutrients and it can lead to weight loss. Now, just like we talked about cancer being this vague term and it's like, well, what is it? Well, the other thing that seems to be very vague when it comes to cancer in this discussion is what causes it, right? Well, when you look around as to what causes cancer, you pretty much can come across everything is going to cause cancer. And that's one of the reasons it's so frustrating. Well, toxic exposures is definitely, I think, one of the top ones. And I'm gonna talk about just a couple of the top things associated with cancer. So toxic exposure. So for instance, if you're smoking all day long, it's pretty obvious that you are probably gonna face cancer at some point in your life, right? However, the not so obvious ones would be like pesticides from the foods that you're eating, cleaning chemicals, the chemicals in your clothing, the chemicals that you're coming across all day long. Your body's not designed to be a 
chemical removal factory, right? It's not designed to just sit there and remove chemicals, harsh chemicals that are made in a lab all day long, right? Our bodies are designed to detox, but not to that level. So we have to watch out for this. So we have like pesticides all over our foods and our rainwater, everything, pharmaceuticals in our water. So we have to really watch out for the toxins. Now, the next thing that is highly associated with cancer is the overconsumption of sugar. I talk about all the time how the average person consumes 125 pounds of sugar. It's devastating and nothing feeds cancer quite like sugar. It's been shown in multiple studies that when you go and basically uh, inject sugar into a cancer cell, it goes nuts. If you inject sugar into a tumor, it grows rapidly. So we have to make sure that we're cutting sugar out of our diet in every way possible. And the other thing that we can do is lower our carbohydrate intake because if you're unhealthy, these carbohydrates are all basically gonna turn into sugar anyway. And then do everything we can to improve our immune system health. Because the reality is, is that we have cancer cells in our body all the time. It's just that like, I literally have cancer cells in my body right now, but my body is keeping them in check. It's keeping everything balanced. It's okay because my body is fighting them off and getting rid of them. Where Whereas when you're unhealthy and your immune system isn't working correctly, these cancer cells can actually flourish and they become uncontrolled by the body's regulatory systems. Now, next warning sign to watch out for is fatigue, okay? Now, if you're chronically tired all the time and even rest doesn't help, this is something you have to really watch out for. Cancers like leukemia are associated with this. And even cancers that are associated with blood loss, right? Let's say that you have bleeding from the colon, bleeding from the stomach. And what will essentially happen is that you'll end up with anemia, okay? And this is when you lack healthy red blood cells and have reduced oxygen carrying capacity in the body, therefore you're fatigued all the time. So everybody has a little bit of fatigue in their life at some point, right? You didn't get enough sleep, kids kept you up all night, work has been stressing you out, fatigue exists. But the type of fatigue I'm talking about is chronic fatigue that absolutely won't go away despite all the efforts to fix it, right? And you're sleeping well at night, everything is like hunky-dory in your life, but yet the fatigue persists. This is when we wanna be careful. Now, next thing we wanna watch out for, this is a warning sign, is changes in your skin color or even changes in the color of a mole on your skin. Your skin can also be a huge clue as to whether or not you're suffering from some sort of cancer. If your skin gets darkened, if it turns yellow, red, itches, you know, you start to get like hair growth in a random spot, unexplained rashes, these can all be a sign that you're dealing with some sort of cancer in the body. So watch out for that. Just always pay attention to your skin. Your skin's your largest organ and it can tell you a lot about your health. So healthy skin equals healthy internal organs. Now, another warning sign we wanna watch out for is sores that don't heal. So if you have spots that bleed and they won't go away and you you know are doing everything you can to fix it, this is often a sign of skin cancer. And if you're dealing with like an oral cancer, you might not necessarily have some sore on your skin, but you could have them in your mouth. So if you're somebody who like smokes, chews, drinks, a lot of alcohol, then you're definitely at higher risk for this type of thing. Now, what do we do about all this, right? Because it's, it's nice to know the warning signs. We have a basic understanding as to what happens and, and why cancer happens, right? But what kind of proactive measures can you take? And this is important because we wanna defend ourselves from cancer. We don't wanna necessarily always wanna be on the defense. However, we wanna be more on the offense, right? We actually wanna be actively participating in preventing cancer in our lives. So what can we do? First thing that we could do is practice intermittent fasting, okay? This is powerful because fasting has been shown to clear out cancerous cells from our body. And so doing like 16 and eight intermittent fasting, a 48 hour water fast, that type of thing is very powerful for fighting off cancer. There's one expert who um, wrote a book on how you can actually fight cancer naturally. And he said, hey, look, if you do like multiple long-term fasts, like three day fasts a year, this is enough to fight off cancer so that you can live cancer free. Now, intermittent fasting, long-term fasting is powerful, but the other thing we should do is focus on going sugar-free. Do not feed cancer in your body. The food that you put in your body is essentially what your body becomes. If you eat junk food, you end up with junk health, okay? So go sugar-free so that you're not in a position where you're feeding cancer. Focus on boosting your immune health, okay? Make sure that you have 
adequate vitamin D in your body. I can't believe how many people are deficient in vitamin D. I go and I do blood work on individuals and when we get that blood work back, it's like, oh my gosh, your vitamin D is, let's say, around 15 and it should be somewhere around 65 on the chart, okay? so. Vitamin D is a very simple thing that you could do in order to optimize immune system health, but also make sure that you're increasing your antioxidant intake. It's very important. Now, the other thing that we can do is get regular exercise. When we get regular exercise, it's shown time and time again, it dramatically reduces your risk of disease. So make sure that you're exercising. These are some of the top things that you can do. Just eat healthy, good whole foods, exercise, get proper uh, immune support. These things will help fight off cancer. Now let's talk about another sign, a warning sign of cancer, and that's cough or hoarseness that just doesn't go away. So a cough is a very common sign of like lung cancer and hoarseness in your voice may mean that you have can cancer somewhere in your throat or even your thyroid gland. And thyroid cancer is like really high uh, on the list of um, probable cancer. So we wanna make sure that we're always paying attention to that. And then we also wanna look for unusual bleeding in the stool or urine, okay? This is another common sign that can show up. And cancer can make blood show up where it shouldn't be. So blood in your stool is a symptom of maybe colon or rectal cancer, which is another very probable cancer today. And tumors along the urinary tract can also cause blood in your urine. So watch out for just strange bleeding around your body. Now also, here's another common sign you wanna watch out for. This is loss of appetite or nausea, okay? If you all of a sudden aren't eating and you don't feel the need to eat and you're just nauseous all the time and this just shows up out of nowhere, this is a very common sign that your body is sick and fighting something, okay? Tumors release hormones, for instance, that distort your body's perception of hunger, making you feel full when you're not, okay? So we have to make sure that we're paying attention to these signs. Now, whenever you have symptoms, like any of these ones I just mentioned, show up, it's very important that you go to your doctor and you get the proper testing. We don't need to sit at home and panic and freak out and watch this video and go, oh my gosh, I have, I've had these before, right? Sure, you've had them, but did they go away? Are they chronic? Does it make sense? Were you sick when some of these things happened? You had a virus, like let's not blow anything out of proportion. But if you're having these and it's not adding up, these different symptoms is not adding up, it's time to get tested. It is so much easier to focus on prevention than being in a very emotionally driven state where you are forced to make very harsh decisions on your health because you never took care of yourself. So be proactive. And if you like this video here, I think you'll really like this one over here.